Low seven. Okay. Hey, Pask. Here's what we've got today. You can see this. It's a Sony PVM 8044Q. It's running. Looks pretty good right now. And it is an RGB. Uh, this is a good one to show because it's it's a little bit easier to get the lighting correct. Hey, David Carmichael. Thank, for, thank you for coming today. Hope you're doing well. And I hope your new PVM is doing well. Um, but so this one, it looks good in RGB mode. But when I switch it over to the mode for composite video or even S video, it does this. It's in black and white. Uh, so it's got a problem. And this is a documented problem that we've talked about before on Zez or Zez and I have talked about before on the cathode ray podcast. And there's a video from RGB Rob that goes through the repair on how to fix this. Uh, and there's even a Sony bulletin about when this happens. Now, occasionally you can get away with just reflowing the solder on the color board on these four points. And sometimes uh, that will correct the problem and other times it will not. Uh, but the problem is, is even if it corrects the problem momentarily or a little bit uh, for a while, eventually it fails like this. And it's really something to do with the parts Sony originally used. If you want to go check out Rob's video, uh, just go check out RGB Rob's channel. But we're about to get started in here. I just wanted to give a quick demo of this thing. Um, I have had this for a while and it's one of the last eight inches that I have um, from a lot that I got. Oh, I can't remember whether it was a, 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 a somewhere in Florida. There was three or four of these. I got them from them. So we're going to go ahead uh, in a minute and we'll open it up and we'll pull this color board. Uh, and once we pull that color board, I'll go through the first part of the repair we'll work on. And once we get that repair done, we should be able to slap that thing right back in the side of the PVM there and uh, be able to uh, test it out. And then if all that goes well and we get our color back, um, we can just go ahead and probably install a cap kit, which on this particular PVM, there's a deflection capacitor kit for it. I have that here. And so we got everything ready to go. All the tools are here. And I just wanted to get things rolling. Looks like the stream has been going good here for a couple of minutes. So we can get ready now. And I will start disassembling this CRT. So let me see which would be the best view for you. And that's going to be back that camera up just a bit like that and as you can tell I'm using the PVM stand here so it's actually a little bit elevated before the repair I'll take it down which will actually benefit everything uh, should give you a little bit better view of the monitor as well as the um, CRT itself so uh, first off I don't know how many people uh, came over from Twitter and saw a tweet I made this morning? But I decided to update my system here today. Uh, a Windows 11 update as well as a update for OBS. And I've had a couple issues. So uh, one of the things is my Stream Deck scene selector is not working. So I apologize for that in advance. But we can live without it. Now, I do want to clear some of these devices out of the way, and then we'll get this uh, unscrewed. Yeah, OBS can be a pain, Christopher, uh, but it's free, so it's nice still. Um, actually, 
I'll take that one screw out and then we'll go ahead and put it oh, down. Let's see if I can add a little bit more light. There we go. Hey, Abe's Games and Skates. Thanks for showing up today. All right, all the consoles are powered down. And now we can remove the shell safely. I'm gonna leave the input board plugged in because that will save me some time. And you can do that on this CRT, but the power is unplugged. And I'll show you something really cool about this one in a second here. And uh, maybe while I'm doing that, I'll turn the turn the desktop music up a little bit while I unscrew this for the next couple minutes. Thanks everybody for showing up see some more people in the chat that's great just in time here before we get started two more to go Bunny, I'm gonna turn this music back down a little bit and we'll get this shell off. Okay. It's one of the easiest shells to take off right there. It's just just literally slide back and out. And check this out. This one has a note where it says a new tube was installed by Ray in May of 2004. <laughs> so the main board we're concerned with is our uh, board over here on this side, which is our color processing board. So I'll swing this around. I'll show you that. CAD board right here. So I'm just going to slide this down. And we're going to be pulling this board. Okay. Let me see. I can probably scoot this in a little bit. There we go. That's a little better. But yeah, we're just going to do that. And take that one out. All right, let's see what we can do here now. Oh, there's no major voltage on this board, so there's no need to disconnect it from the you know you don't have to mess the flyback at all over here that's on the other side and it's not the isolated well so yep this is our board we're gonna take this whole board out of here and there's just a bunch of plug-ins and then we'll get over to the work desk there we go Oh, yeah. 
we have it. Easy as pies. Let's go ahead now. Get set up. Take a quick look at this board. Stuff situated a little bit. And we can move over to a new camera view. And that should be this one. And woo, there's a bright light right on there. So this is our this is our B board. Let's see if I can get some better lighting in here for you. Maybe that'll help a little bit. All right. There we go. So see, this is the board with the troubles. And the troubles all come from these parts right here. They're even nice and color coordinated for us. It's over on this section of the board. I'll zoom in for you as close as I can. It is these two focus there for a second. This potentiometer right here and then the one right next to it. Those two pots right there. See how close I can get this to. There we go. That's a good shot. Those two, they go bad. They need to be changed. That's what's happened. And if you look at the other side, this one has already had the solder reflowed on it. So that repair was already attempted and either worked for a little bit or was done and it just never worked. So what we can do is we can replace that. And then the service bulletin says replace both those. Well, no, that's not even the right part. Those are the crystals. I'm sorry. I was looking at the wrong side. That's actually these over here. So maybe, I don't know. It looks like still there's some leftover residue. So it could be solder anyway. This one, and then this one, and we're going to replace those, and then we're going to add a uh, capacitor in between it, I believe, and that should fix the problem. And then we can reinstall it and actually see if it fixes the problem. And if we, that's just, for some reason, it knocks the color. Those parts go bad, and it knocks out your color on your set uh, just in composite and S-Video. So here's the parts for this. You need two of each. And let's see. Oh, this first one, yeah. Five picofarad, 50 volt radial capacitor. Yeah, I should get some more tools, but every time I, I know, every time I do a job, there's always a new tool I need, you know? Darren. Hey, Travis Suter, good to see you. And here's the parts. So for this board, we need two of these. And then we also need the potentiometers, which is a, a capacitor trimmer. It's three to 10 picofarads and 100 volts. And that's the specification. Now, if you're like wanting to order these parts, there's all the digi key information. Um, same thing with this. If you want to like freeze this screenshot, there's the digi key information if you need it for the order parts that I'm using. And hopefully they'll work. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I always love to do is get parts and then test them out for everybody. So these are the potentiometers right there, tiny little pieces. Tiny little lovely pieces. Put those away. And now I'm going to plug up my FR301 and we're going to desolder this. Desolder all this. Let's see. That should help a little. While that heats up, somebody can look at this board. Um, this is again the B board. It's markered right down here. B board, color board, CAD. And oh, uh, this one is one of the more decked out models. So it has this card in it. I can't remember exactly what this card does, but 
um, off the top of my head, but it's uh, it's got that card. But the caps on these don't normally go bad very often. It's generally those parts on this board. And then uh, that capacitor kit is actually on a board just like this on the other side of the monitor. Anyway, we'll get started here on taking this apart. So I should have some tweezers. I thought I did somewhere. Let's see. Make sure I've got those because I could need those to pull. Well, we'll see. Let's see if we can do it without them to begin with. So we're going to desolder. Oh, there they are. <laughs> of course, look at me. What a goon hiding under the board. So we're going to desolder these parts. And since this is a tiny board, let's go ahead and re reflow a little more solder on it just to just to start with. Let's turn that light off. Maybe you can see a little better. And uh, we'll reflow these points with fresh solder first and that way they'll come out really nice and easy right when we uh, decide to pull them yeah so that's where we're going right in here it's a big old amount of solder right there that bubble on in there So this should help it come out easier. That ought to be good. We got the FR301. Back up a little bit. Okay. We're going to pull these little parts here. They're probably going to get really hot because they're all metal, but that's okay. I'll try to do this without destroying anything. There we go. Something. Something's going on with that side, though. There's like a piece of debris right there. Let's get in there and see what that is. Look at that. Not sure what that is. There's something like, oh, that's weird. It's like a leg of not this part. Ooh, yeah, that little piece went flying. That was like a leg from another component or something. There it is. I doubt you'll be able to see this thing. It is tiny. But this was... It was this little piece of debris right here, actually, on that pad. That's not something I did. So, interesting. <laughs> I have no... Look at my fingertips. <laughs> Ray, I actually cut the crap out of these two the other day, building... Uh, building something and I was furious. I was like yelling at myself laughing. I have no fingertips anymore it's Like uh, John Doe from you remember that of course everybody remembers John Doe from the movie seven uh, How he like melts off all his fingertips to protect his identity uh, That's not the reason I do it, but it nonetheless happens so we're going to need to probably be safe and add some fresh solder back into that little spot right there. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. Okay. So hopefully this will come out a little nicer than it did that time. Oh yeah, that should be good. Oh yeah. We are loose, so that's a good sign. We're loose, let's see. There we go. Hmm. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right there. Your office has a fingerprint scanner. The door wouldn't open for me after the weekend of money. <laughs> That's funny. I had... Uh, I have always thought about that. Yeah, what a, a door scanner. It makes it so inconvenient. You just like look at, oh, I can't get in. Um, or imagine that's why I never do the biometric stuff on, on options for like security options on my phone or anything like that. I never can do that because same reason. Um, I my wife actually had a kind of interesting same kind of thing. She has not not fingerprint scanner at her work, but. Uh, they do have a weird login system that you have to use uh, a cell phone to like log in and do really anything, anything related to her job. She has to have her cell phone. And so the interesting thing is, is this, this the work, which is it's expected, but they don't pay for her cell phone. And I was like, well, how can they? How can they do that? Like take advantage of us having a cell phone and use it for their security systems. And the only reason this was a uh, even an issue at all was because she left her phone one day and couldn't got into work and I had to um, go bring it up to her, which is no problem. But I just thought it was interesting that she had, you know, they, they say, Oh, like if, if it's a, a benefit, to the worker they want to like charge you a tax for it <laughs> but if it's a benefit to the company the company doesn't have to pay an extra tax i don't think it's just weird but uh, th then i was like is there a different option for that you should tell your boss that's not cool what if you actually lose your cell phone or it gets like stolen seems kind of dumb anyway this is the other one uh it's in a little bit better shape i did notice that's that's mm, this one was missing a leg. So it's not not good. Ugly little orange guys. Get rid of those. Doesn't matter which way you put these in. Well, actually it does matter. <laughs> I am sorry. There's a shape. This is like a a weird shape that only goes one direction and it, it matches a printing on the board. It's uh you see that how it's got that shape right there. It's not quite circular, but it is. It's got a flat bottom. And so you just line up the flat bottom side with the flat bottom side, right? With our new part. This is our part. See, it's got, whoops, looks the same. Try to get a hold of that. So it's the same. Uh, it's very difficult to, there you go. See, that's the same shape. So, pretty easy. Slip it in there. You can turn it over, bend the legs out a little bit. So, um, here's some fun thing. I, uh, there we go. Got those bent, the legs bent. Um, that's the first one put in place there. Hey, Belmont. Good to see you today. I didn't think you'd be able to make it. I thought you probably for sure was going to have a nice sunny day. Have to go out there and work hard. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by, America. Um, I'm just going to put these in. Oh, so what I was saying before, completely unrelated note. It's been a crazy week for me. I've had a bunch of things just happening, so... I went to a property uh, tour yesterday for an amazing looking piece of property downtown in Harrisonburg where I live uh, and it's a house goodness this little thing it's an old house and it's in this downtown area super hip area of town um, and it's on auction, but it is in crazy, you know, when these things go to auctions, I go to these property auctions. Um, I go to it because they start off at a dollar. They usually sell for a couple hundred thousand, you know, generally speaking, sometimes they're deals. Sometimes they're not. I think there's a bunch of fishy stuff. You talk about auction rigging in like eBay, 
it's not the only place. I mean, there's definitely some weird stuff going on in those auctions. But anyway, so I went to this house yesterday and, uh, I mean, it's huge, right? It's got, it's got two floors that are actually finished. It's old. Um, but it's got two, looks like a castle too. Sorry to keep interrupting myself, but it's got, um, big, tall ceilings, feels like it's got a half a dozen bedrooms in it but the darn thing only has one full bathroom <laughs> in the entire house uh so it's it's kind of wild to see these weird old houses and then um you know nobody's been it's it's usually somebody dies um and and their estate auctions these properties and the uh so the the estate just auctions off these properties but the thing is no one while that process goes through and takes place um the house is basically a vacant property for sometimes years in that time period and then you have things like i mean there was a, this this place had a full-on like wasp slash hornet's nest living inside the walls. And uh, well, that might have slipped a little. Yeah, it did. Hang on. Make sure this stay in there. Um, so anyway, uh, the house is really, really cool. Um, I'm tempted. I mean... I really, it would be an awesome house to own the great area and stuff. Um, I think it's going to go for more than what I had thought originally before I went and toured it. So I doubt I'll buy it, but you never know. If I do, that would be kind of crazy. The auction ends next Wednesday. Um, Yeah, it's like it's in this old school part of town where it's down near the courthouse, kind of like two blocks away in the square. And uh, so, the, like, every house down there is really pretty and nice. And if it was in good shape, it would be a very expensive house. Like, um, I mean, but it, it, take, it would take some crazy work because it's got some amazing architecture that's just custom and wild and old now that has to be dealt with like rounded windows that look like they're like a hundred years old and uh it's so it, the city's probably been around a while longer than this house has but it's so it's not that old it's not like a 1700s house but i actually found see i've been looking all over and i always look at these cheap properties because everything in real estate right now is insane uh expensive but there are these cheap properties that will sell. So we've got the, um, just to show you here, we've got these installed now. Uh, we shouldn't need to adjust them. So let's hope that's the case, but they're good and installed. And we're going to go through and do the, uh, put the capacitors actually just in between the parts right there. But anyway, uh, the, so the, the, oh, the other week I was looking around and I found this house and it's about, I want to say it's about 10 miles from where I am right now in distance. And this house, it was built in the 1700s. And it's on the main highway that not, not the interstate, mind you. This is an old, like an old road that has been around since the 1700s called Lee Highway. Or something. I mean, it has been around. I know parts of it. It might have been renamed, but right now it's it's like highway. It's a certain highway through the state of Virginia, and this house was in this old town on that road, and uh, house was from the 1700s. Big house, and it sold for a hundred thousand dollars. It had a pretty decent sized yard too, like three quarters of an acre, right on this main road in the small town. Um, and I was I was actually sad that I didn't find it because when I found it, it had already said it had already uh, had a, a accepted pending offer on it. And so um, once that was the case, there was no 
There's no going to get it myself. And then there's another one that came up recently similar where it was like dilapidated and um, sold for 150000 Gosh, these things, I tell you what. Yeah, the, that's the thing that's most intriguing, America, is how crazy the architecture is in it. All the both these houses, um, it's that's the thing I love about it. I've owned a new house usually before, and then I sold my house, moved here. Right now I'm renting, which is fine um, because the interest rates are so nuts. That's the reason I don't want to go buy a traditional home again, is because of, of course, you know, the interest rates at this point. So the only thing I'm looking at are these auction properties, and stuff like that. Um, or I'll just have to put my I keep my money in savings and wait till wait till uh, interest rates come back down if they do if they don't then I'll just save up and have to have a larger down payment because mm, mortgages have gotten really expensive uh, this year if anybody's looking at them they know so uh, but the the older houses are always there and especially in this area an old old town that's back to the 1700s. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, there's been people in this area for that long. There's a lot of crazy old houses. And uh, when they come for sale, they generally need a lot of work. I I had, uh, let's see if I can add a little light and make it look better down there for you. I had looked at one house that was from the 1700s, similarly. And, um... I go to it and I went on the first floor and it had been sinking for so long that the, um, the roof was like six point six and a half feet tall. And I, I almost hit the ceiling. I'm six foot two and I would almost hit the ceiling just walking in it. And what was happening is it was originally seven feet and over time it had, um, you know, it had gone all the way from that tall down to, six and it's gone down it sank six and six inches the whole bottom floor because then i went upstairs and there was a lot more headroom on the second floor and i was laughing with the realtor um when i was looking at it but it's just when you start looking at stuff and how much it costs now to like borrow money it's just ridiculous really so it's not it's got to be a really sweet deal to borrow money with it anything really i feel like right now unless you have to have it there we go all right thanks for stopping by belmont see you on the next one have a great rest of your work day okay there we go so that's the first one of those capacitors installed look at that I'm going to clean that up um, in a second, but see how it's just between the two points on that part I just installed. And I can bend that out of the way a little bit so nothing's, make sure that nothing behind it's bridging. And it looks good. And we'll put some, we'll put some uh, stuff right in here. I'll show you in a minute to make sure that it doesn't touch. Just some insulation and goop there. Oh man, it's 13 feet tall. That is huge. Yeah, see the house we went and looked at yesterday is unreal. It had a, some really tall ceilings and crazy architecture and uh, some of the tallest ceilings. I was like, this place makes me feel like I feel more comfortable in a house like that where it's just big because I don't like in my house, I'm hitting the if I jump up and down, I'm hitting the roof, the ceiling, even eight feet. You know, if I try to like uh, do an exercise routine or something. In the house, um, which I know that sounds weird, but I would actually do the old DDP. I did used to do the DDP yoga for a while. Don't know if anybody else has ever tried the DDP yoga. It's pretty good. I just have a hard time staying dedicated to anything like that. Get too bored and start thinking about the CRTs I should be working on.
All right, we're getting close here. We're getting close, I promise. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I like it. I like it a lot. We'll do that. Come over here. Beat this guy up. Get some slaughter on her. Yes, sir. Hold it for a second. All right. Try to get in here and clip this close. There we go. Mm -hmm. What we got going on? Excellent, there we go. That's what we want. We just want those two pots right there. Oh yeah, Jonathan, I used to live in uh, in near Nashville. That's where I moved from. Yeah, Lebanon. Actually, that's uh, it's real close to where I was living. I lived in uh, Gallatin, Tennessee. That's where I moved from to here. And uh, yeah, I mean... There are some places like in my area, I haven't had any good. Uh, there hasn't really been any reduction in price on any property, and it's because there's just not any inventory. Like currently, if you're paying a low interest rate, there's no incentive for you to sell your home and upgrade with that unless you're ready to pay all that extra money Hendersonville that's where I graduated high school from HHS that's pretty wild anyway yeah it's Kind of crazy. Anyway, we're going to get over here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use some alcohol and clean all that solder flux off those four po points and actually the points under it where the last person did some work and didn't clean it off. And do that. Not much to it, just being gentle with an old Minions, Minions toothbrush. All right, sometimes I like to do this with the towel. Get some extra cleaning in there. Oh yeah, that's going to be good and clean. Okay. Pokey nerd coming in late. This one, um, first off, it won't show any color on composite video or S video. So that's the big problem. And that's what we're fixing right now. So if you... <laughs> yeah, look, see, it's almost, it's got half a minion. I've been using this so long to clean boards. It's like a, it's got my thumb rubbed off the minion's face. Uh, uh, anyway, we've we've replaced a couple potentiometers right here. Um, these two white potentiometers right here. You can go back to the beginning of the stream and watch it, and then I show what's wrong, and then that's what we're working on. There's those new parts right there, and uh, just gonna keep on cleaning. You don't want to clean too aggressively. There are like a lot of surface mount parts on this board. So I have, believe it or not, knocked off one of them. And uh, when I did, the, the image just scrolled nonstop. And I, it took me forever to figure out what I did. And I went back and I saw a trace or a, a spot on the board where I had obviously knocked the um, 
it was either a, a, a resistor or a capacitor surface mount when I had knocked it off it was on the on the sink line so it just wouldn't sink it would just cr constantly vertically scroll I'm sorry the vertical scrolling um, like adjustment line where it was not something like that I just one of these little pieces that's what we got now watch this someone someone asked about this this will happen I've got my little vacuum not vacuum blower Okay, and we end up with this like white sheen of just dust residue basically from drying that alcohol out, evaporating it. And I just take a soft brush and go over it again like that to give it that extra clean look. You don't have to be abrasive. This is a this came with like a shoe cleaning kit, but look, there's absolutely no way this is going to short anything. It's all hair and wood. So I love, I love stuff like this. It has multiple uses like the minions brush. All right. Everything else is looking good on here. Um, the last thing I do, there's a resistor and there's some other pieces in, in this section. And I'm going to try to insulate the parts a little bit. It's recommended by Sony that you do this. And I'm going to use Vibra Tight 202 Viz Torque White 20251 Tamper Detection Marker. I know it sounds silly, but this is actually pretty good stuff. Uh, it has some uses besides just, you know, it actually comes off easily if you need it to. It'll prevent these parts from moving around. Just put it right in there. And you'll look just like a Sony Pro, right? Look at that. After a um, minute, it'll get hardened. And look at that. Hey, Dell. Good to see you here today. Look at that. We are just as good as the Sony Pros. That's what they did 20 years ago. This is our repair today. Of course, we have to see if it worked. That's the uh, important question, of course. Did it actually work? Just going to shut off my soldering equipment for a second. Get my cleaning gear out of the way. And we can reinstall this board and run a test. How about that? That's pretty good. It's a pretty good turnaround time right there. There's our repair right there. There we go. We did, did Sony proud. Okay. And back to the other camera and let's make sure we get the right one not that one let's go with this one okay yeah I'm gonna stick the board back in here now and as I do that I'll turn the music up a little bit louder so you can hear it not too loud and then when I come back I'll take that adjust that down for you
All right, that's all we need. Yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Get that in check a little bit more. And we will get things ready to test this thing out. Um, got it. Got it all hooked up. You don't have to hook up this last connection to test it. That's just a ground wire. And then we can leave the, do the door open like that while we test it here. So this is a big moment here. Could have made a big mistake. I doubt it, but it's always possible. Do I ever get bored repairing CRTs? Oh no, I never get bored. Honestly, uh, I like doing this more than playing games. I get bored playing video games quicker than I get bored in these CRTs. Uh, I know it sounds maybe crazy, and sometimes I get I get frustrated a lot in the CRTs. Okay, we are. Let me double check. Everything's set. Let me turn this around. It's got a brand new thing. We are getting set up. All right, we got power running. We got power running. All right. 180 asked what's the difference between this and an 8042Q. This one has a higher TV line count. It's like a 450 line tube. And yours, I think, has a 250 line tube in it. That's one thing. And this one does have a couple of minor features. Like that little board that plugs in I showed a little while ago. Can't remember exactly what it is. Excuse me, I have some allergy issues. Hang on. <clears throat> okay. Well, I can see the consoles are turned on. So, get myself a little bit worked up. Believe I have it set to RGB mode. So, hopefully, uh, when we turn it on, if it comes on okay, we'll see um, our RGB. Okay, I hear it coming on. And hopefully, hopefully we'll have something on screen. If not, I could have it incorrectly set up. Okay, something's not right. This one off first. Got everything correct again. This is why you can get a good deal on some of these. No one can remember how to. Well, that's not right. Is it? Woo! It must have done something incorrectly. Hang on. Hmm. 
wonder if I have something unplugged or if something you can see it there. I'm missing green now. Uh, not normal because it was showing color before. There you go. Interesting. Huh. In component mode. No, they're starting to come. Weird. Okay. I have no idea. It's just starting to like balance itself out here. There we go. How weird is that? Look at that. It started, it's, it's finally back in color. That was interesting. It took a long time for it to like get back to a warm up screen. Let's let's watch it for a second. Nothing looks like it came unplugged, so um, you can definitely see on your screen the red, green, and blue. So we have our colors there. I don't know what that was about. Let's let's see now if it just runs for a second. Again, this is RGB, so red, blue, everything's looking normal on here. That was interesting. Interesting. Maybe it was just the fact those parts had never had any voltage run through them yet. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Check it out. I finally... See, that's that's one of the reasons you can find these monitors and get a good deal on them. Is it's Even me, who's worked on a hundred of these, it's still a scramble of just pressing the buttons till you get the right combination to get what you want on the screen. All right. Woo, guys, I got good news. I think I got good news. Maybe. I don't know. I thought it was color there for a second. Oh, it is. Check it out. <laughs> I thought I blew it today. Man, I thought for a second there I screwed up. I thought I had the wrong parts or something. But it looks like it's good. You see that? So we have color back to it. We didn't have that. Remember? We only had uh, black and white. So part one was successful. And that's, that's one of the most important uh, repairs you can do on this model. And what, what time we got? Okay, that's one hour in. We're done with the first part of this. So, how are we all doing out there? Huh? Yeah, thank you, Dario. I thought I, thought I screwed it up for a minute. But it obviously took a second for that voltage to go through those new parts and get balanced and... Um, get the screen back. So that's the first part. I'd like to let it run for just a minute. And, uh, and that's it. Hey, Master Safer, how you doing? Good to see you here. You just made it. We just finished the first part of the uh, restoration on this little set. And again, this is what I think is the most important part of this set is if you have a working one, this is one of the really important repairs to get done because, um, it's it's relatively simple like if you had this monitor and you wanted to get this service just what i just did uh, you could honestly pull that board mail it to me 
And you can tell I can get it done within an hour. So that's like a minimal one hour labor and the parts are like five or 10 bucks at the most. Uh, so that's like, that's the kind of thing that I do on Patreon is I do that a lot. Oh man. Can I imagine people using a hundred year old PVMs in the future? Um, yeah, like with everything replaced and, and a good working tube, I could see it. Absolutely. Uh, it will be in museums. Um, and all that, it will definitely still be around. So it, the tubes aren't going to, not, not all of them are going to die off that quickly. Um, they will, they do last a long time. All right. We are ready to kind of move to stage two, which is the capacitor kit. Let's let's take a look, take a look at the kit here first, and um, I'll switch over cameras, and then we'll get this thing taken apart. All right, so these are these are our capacitors we're changing out. Uh, this kit can work for four one, four two, four three, four four, four fives. And I want to say it's about 29 pieces, something like that. A lot of, a lot of easy caps to source, pretty common caps. So got the kit here in the slot. And uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm actually going to switch over. And let's, let's do this. I'm going to do, first off, a all camera. Uh, this one's actually my personal one, so eventually it will be for sale on Patreon if uh, if this is one you're looking for. That's for generally I just list them on there to people. Uh, and then this is easily shippable, uh, but the other way I can help people coordinate shipping pretty easily with you ship. Anyway, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go take a quick restroom break. I mean, I have to go... Um, also check a message real quick about a v about my vehicle. It's in the shop today. So anyway, I'm not I'm not going anywhere. I'm just gonna switch this over. I'll put the music back up. You guys hang out in the chat. Hang out with me. Uh, give me a couple minutes, and I'll be right back. And uh, we will rip this thing apart and go over um, the capacitor kit. Of I thought we were about to have the first ever time that I actually screwed something up on live stream. <laughs> I thought maybe I read the parts wrong that I had ordered because I just purchased these repair parts recently. And um, I couldn't actually find a physical service bulletin, just reference to it. So I couldn't find anything more than watching RGB Rob's video and getting the parts from what... I saw on that video and so I mean I was definitely nervous that it wasn't going to turn out as planned but it did so thank you everybody for hanging out again we just fixed the color board on this PVM so now when we use it in our uh, composite video mode as well as this video we have full color and you can go back to the beginning of this stream and see where it didn't show color at the beginning so repair one is done. Um, I'm going to again get you uh, back over to the other view and uh, Steve's jazz recommendations. <laughs> I got some good stuff. I can't. Uh, man, there's some really funky stuff I was grooving to. I when I bought my car, it came with it's a used car and it came with all these built-in music and. Um, I've really been just finding some weird jazz stuff in that collection. Somebody who was a jazz fan owned this car before me and left all this music embedded in the vehicle's memory. And uh, so I've been enjoying some of that. I'll get the names of the stuff that I've found recently. Um, oh, D Dell, come on. Thank you, man. $50 super chat. You're too nice, man. That's, that's amazing. If I do make it to... Uh, 
I do make it up to good old um, Retro World Expo, it will be a great time and I'll buy you a beer for sure if you drink beer. Or some other drink. Could even be coffee if you're not a drinking man, but... Most of us in the CRT world have to relax every once in a while with a cold beer. It says, pocket change towards the Retro World Expo trip. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Dell. So, yeah, um, I have been, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is I'm, I can't, I'll be honest, I, I've got to uh, probably play it safe for the next few months. I don't know that I can, like, safely go, that sounds stupid, but safely go on a full-blown trip uh, myself, uh, something like that, just yet after the incident. And I will be there alone. I mean, I really want to, so I don't know. I've got to go try to... I, before even that happens, I want to go make a trip back up to New York. So if you're ever interested in swinging by and hanging out in New York sometime, I'll probably do that before even that show comes up. We could hang out. Anybody really could come hang out at Brooklyn uh, Arcade and uh, downtown Brooklyn. And we can meet up there and like close that place off. The arcade and hang out all night all right so let me get over to the other view for you guys and we're going to um, we're gonna disassemble this get a little more light on it I'm gonna power it off So just like before, I don't have to disconnect all the inputs because I'm just servicing the board on the opposite side. So I'm going to roll it around for you to see it. So this is our next major board here. Dell, if you're still here, you'll have to jump on a stream with me sometime if you got the availability. I tell you what would be good is uh let's switch over here back to the main view. It'd be good is if I could get you to live stream, we could test some tubes with that tube tester, because man, I've whew, I am not gonna spoil much, but I've been uh screwing some things up with that tube tester at uh, BK467. I I went through and I did some things anyway. It's 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 going to be too epic to not have a video about it. I think that people will probably laugh. Um, I made some Twitter posts about it. People might have seen. All right. We're going to pull this board now. Bunch of little clips down here holding this in. over to that other view for you it's a bit dark i get it i get it too dark this is the main deflection board This one set of cables has to come with the deflection card. Oh, 
Okay, so I need to do something real quick. Didn't even notice this. Gotta get that. There's a zip tie. All right. This should be fun. Here we go. D board. Let's do this. Here's our deflection card. And let's take a quick look at it. Go over some things on it. Marked right here, D board. Just like the other board, it's same size. Everything. And uh, I told you this this cable doesn't come detached from this board this detaches from the other flyback board and these see these potentiometers right here those actually control all your geometry so if you have to make geometry adjustments on this set that's where you do it from all those pots right there and the cap kits gonna be a lot of these caps in here and that is going to be what we're going to be changing. So the other thing I'll tell you about this board is there are power parts in this board. And you've got some important things in here. If you have one of these and it does not power on, of course, you're going to need to service the power supply, which we've not even looked at in this video. Uh, but this board also could be problematic if... If, or if this has a problem, um, you can get zero power to your monitor. So if you check out here, we have an obvious glass fuse, right? Probably an AGS fuse. Uh, 250 volts. I don't know. 5 amps, something like that, probably. I'm not sure. Uh, but we also have a solid surface mounted, or not so, you know, through hole mounted fuse right here on this set see this is a fuse and you could not power on because this fuse right here is blown see how it's a 25 amp fuse f fuse 1601 uh, it'll be in the manual if you find it but it also has 1.25 amps on it s o c or s c c um, so if that blows they won't get power and to test this you need to have a multimeter and test for continuity just to see if it if it's good. You could test that, uh, but you can't visually check that. And, you know, I thought there was a second one of those fuses on this board. It may just be that single one, but you have to watch these particular PVMs. Uh, they will have fuses on other boards, and you might run into a fuse on another board um, that we haven't looked at today. I don't believe there's a fuse on the color board, but... Um, we didn't look at it as closely. I just remembered that because I've had that fuse blow before and uh, You have to change it So let's go through here. We're gonna take a sharpie and mark off Or heck I'll just power it on. We'll just pull we'll just pull these caps off the board as they uh, We'll pull them out as as we go um, rather than marking them all off, make sure we got the right ones. And so five two seven. Well, I guess we will mark them just so I can do it more quickly after I mark them. So now you get to do the hunt, right? See five two sevens right here. So do a nice dot on it. 8, 31, and 32, which this is 831, and that's 1610, next to that 1615, and 832's right here, so that one's gotta go, let's see if I can get you a little closer in here, you can see what I'm looking at, uh, 
Let's see what else we got to go. Got these three marked. Five, six, seven, eight, three, six, five, six, sevens right here. And then five, five, three, five, five, three. I can find five five three. I should be able to find the others. It, it kind of rolls around together. What's that one? It's eight four seven. Five three seven. Okay. Um. Let's see. I'm not finding five six seven. I'm finding five three seven right here. And. Thirty-two. Well, five. Let's just go through. Five thirty-two is on the list. Five thirty-seven is on the list. Let me go back here to my kit list. So I found five two seven eight three one eight three two five six seven. Um. Ah, that's what I was looking at wrong. So that's five six seven right there. Well, five five three is right here. So we found five five three, five three seven, five four eight. Five four eight's right here. So it's five three two. It's five two nine. Right there. And five three two five two one. Hmm. We're gonna jump over maybe here up top. Five thirty eight, five thirty three, five thirty six. Are any of those on this? Uh, no, this is a 25 volt 1000, so it's a bigger cap. Interesting. Does it look like a 25 volt 1000? That's a 50 volt 1000. Five forty two. Man, a lot of these are just not on this. 532, 503. Right, this is a little bit of a hunt. So, what we're gonna do is we'll go through, we'll remove the parts that we've marked now and, and hopefully Throughout that process, we'll come across some of the others. I don't want to just sit here and look at this and not actually remove any caps for 20 minutes. So let's let's go ahead and start moving, removing some that we've already marked off. Another issue with this is going to be solder quality. Occasionally, well, it's not even. Duh. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I forgot to turn the turn the pump on. Power it. Has to be plugged in. That would make sense. All right, we're just still, you know, kind of screwing around with this cap kit, everybody. We're going to remove some of these caps here. And and then we'll replace them. And I'm still looking for this 25 volt 1000 capacitor because it shouldn't be able to hide like that. I mean, that's kind of a big, that should be a big capacitor. And is it this one that I've already marked off? Five, that says 532. Of course, that is the one I just marked off. Goodness gracious. You're right. I am crazy. There we go. 521. I forty nine, five forty five, five forty nine, five forty five. 
and 550 are on this list. 45, 49, 50. 03 and 42. Eight, four, five, there's no more eights. Five, zero, two is not on that list. Five, zero, three is wherever you're hiding. Five, oh, four. Five, oh, six. Five, oh, eight. Five, oh, three, right here. Five, four, two. Cool. Okay, we, oh, look at this. We, by the time this thing gets heated up, after all my complaining, we'll finally find all these parts. 46 and 47 are down here. 51 and 34. That's these two next to this big chiclet capacitor. There we go. There we go, everybody. Now we've got them all marked. Should be able to pull these. Got the gun nice and ready and hot. And we will start from this side, if it's possible. Let's go ahead and do 527. Now, here's the thing. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I might damage this board if I do that, because this solder doesn't look like... It doesn't look like anything that I want to really solder or try to do without reflowing. to get the angle right so you're not looking at a, a blurb okay so let's see where this is where's this starting 527 we're not worried about it being ugly now we're just getting fresh solder or solder in those points and eight three one mm -hmm. oh, this is eight three two eight three one the reason I do this is it just makes these parts come out easier you don't always need to do this there's some sometimes if the solder's nice and stuff you can just skip this step and actually get in here and get to removing the capacitors and you could try that right off the bat but this is some pretty thin solder that if I if I'm careless and try to just go in then I could burn the pads on some of these things, and I'd rather not. But some plates like this one. These big caps will have these huge ground plates takes forever for the solder to get through there. Alright, let's remove what we've got so far. Let's get rid of that big one I was just working on while it's still hot. Yeah, see, it just uh, came out of there, but... Uh, 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 and then uh, some solder fall down right there. So there's the capacitor. Look at that nasty thing. 16 volt 470. That's definitely a suspect capacitor that you could imagine uh, would go bad and needs to be changed. And then let's remove these other ones that we've got solder already on. It's like the first three from the kit. Saving that. Oh, 
Oh baby, we've got a sticker. So this thing, see this is, that's kind of why you have to take your time with this. These, these little guys can be frustrating um, to deal with. You'll, you'll find yourself redoing the work over and over again sometimes because, you know, it, don't get frustrated. Like if you try to get it out, don't force it. Don't keep your tool on there forever. Add fresh solder, restart, try to wiggle the part around like I'm doing because, uh, you know, it's... Yeah, it's a little bugger, you know, just doesn't want to cooperate sometimes, you know what I mean? And that's a little better, isn't it? Just silly. is is the other leg is literally on the biggest ground plate see how it's on these big ground plates and when that happens it's very difficult to get all the solder to come off the leg and for the parts even fall so it's really 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 just an annoying thing to deal with like you can tell one part is like trying to remove like that should I should be on like the fourth or fifth capacitor here, but but that's just the second one because that's what that's what you get on this little board, and then it's these jammy con. So that shows me that I need to do that. I need to go through and do every single pad on here. Because if you look at these pads, I mean, you don't want to damage them. They, they, some of them have traces where they're important on both the top side as well as the bottom side. So, um, that's just flux residue left over. But even that might have gotten a little bit on the mask. Yeah, that's mostly flux residue. Okay. Just checking out this integrity here. All right, so let's move on. That's two caps out, really. See, this is going to take longer than installing the new caps. Uh, usually, pulling the caps is one of the easier, easier things to do. Um, but not always. I mean, again, got a, a one that doesn't want to really come out. Let's see. I got one leg. There we go. It's like pulling teeth, man. Pulling teeth. See? Everything's good on there, but... But see, we're, we're moving at a slower than ideal pace for this repair, kind of. But the good news is, is I got a little bit ahead of schedule today. But that's the reason I'm even working on this one in the first place. Because after this one, we'll be working on a D20. I just knew that this was something I could do easily on a stream. 527. You can go through here and check your check your caps against the list, you know. 527, 831, or 553. And... We've got our 50 volt 10, which came out of 831 and 832. Both had 50 volt 10s. That's perfect. Everything's good so far. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. So now let's get let's go for these. Got one more. I think I put the fresh solder on. It looks like this one for sure. But I can see I can see some points on this board for sure that need fresh fresh solder on it. Like that's one of the other things. I'll have to spend time doing is putting more solder on this board. Gosh, you little bastard. I mean, whew. this is a problem with these little boards, man. They're just like so annoying. Woo! Get you like so practiced. Practiced. Practice makes perfect, right? By the time you're done with this job, you'll have mastered the art of EVM perfection because you will know how to remove every cap. This is still getting hotter than I like. Look at that. That one is not wanting to come out. Not at all. It's just silly. So we're going to do the old Heat and yank, hopefully, because it's only got one leg. Goodness gracious, look at that thing. Stupid old Rubicons from the year 1994. Rock and roller. This one's got some on it. I didn't change it. I'll go ahead and remove this one if we can. Someone else may have changed it before. Uh, I'm gonna use some terrible solder. Goodness gracious, and burn the board under it. Uh, oh gosh. What is this person made of this thing? Holy crap. They screwed this thing up bad. Good grief. This is something else you can find where somebody else came before you and oh my gosh, they basically burned the damn pads off this thing. Yeah, completely. I mean, I didn't barely put this. My iron's not any hotter. It's actually on the lowest setting. They, uh, let's see. Wow. Holy crap. That is just terrible. Now this might be um, just a single-sided cap, if we're lucky. But I'll be honest with you. This Whoever came in here and changed that, they, see it only takes one full change in one cap. Incorrectly to ruin a beautiful machine. Hello, sir. Can you recap my machine? Absolutely. Let me go and take a hot blowtorch to the circuit board. And that way we can get that cap out of there nice and quickly. And at the same time, don't worry about a thing. No, see, this does have a trace going to it, doesn't it? Or does it not? Let's get some alcohol on this thing. Get some alcohol on it. Hopefully it's just... Uh, that's what I think is interesting. It worked fine, so... I'm thinking this is a possibility this is a single-sided trace on the top only, and this person just, you know, held the their blowtorch on there so long that they burned the bottom pad of the pads off. And yeah, see, there's no... I can still see the actual copper in here which is good so I can solder from probably the top side or maybe even just the legs and get enough solder down in there um, because there's no trace that trace I thought might go through it actually goes around it right here right around here but yeah look at that isn't that a butchering 
right there you see that and that was all hidden see I just took out that one right next to it so you know that you know those ones right there they're fine that one's fine hey Matt D welcome Yeah, Bob a lot, no, no good on that one. That's a pretty lousy, golly. You'll always, you'll find a lot of that in these um, eight inch circuit boards where they've been put together and somehow they survive. Okay, we're not gonna worry about it. I think we can get past that, but it's obviously something we're gonna need to Remember, if we have any problems with our vertical circuit once we get this cap kit completed. Next, we're going to get some more of these out. And like I said, we're not going to... Uh, I'm not going to play around with the solder on the board at all. We're just going to reflow it. Here we go. So this one's going to be the stubborn side. The negative leg. And even just... Even just this is ridiculous. I wonder if I can pull this at all and get it to budge. Bye. Yeah, I got it some. If you pull that leg right on out, isn't that interesting? This is not the way I'd recommend doing this, but sometimes just might as well make it easy on yourself. Like, see, I just pulled that cap by heating it up without my desoldering tool, and then I'll desolder. I'll desolder. Yeah, so far, Matt D, this is a recap of the um, deflection card we're working on right now. And uh, the, But the main problem to begin with on this monitor was... Oops, sorry. Was that it had the color issues where... Uh, if you used S-Video or composite video that it wouldn't show color, it would show black and white. a bad cap on this board but there's also um so that's what whoo that was actually coming through the main hole right there so it's so they must be getting clogged on me here my little chamber get some of this stuff out of the way So we fixed the color problem by changing a couple of potentiometers and then we did a preventative repair where we added a capacitor between them. And that doesn't sound very good. Let me let that heat up. We're going to try to clean this thing. a fume extractor yet Stefan but you can't see it or hear it I have to blow it towards the fume extractor and then there's another smaller one but it is so loud I'm not going to put it up here on the desk you'll just hear it not me There we go. See, there was something clogged in there. Still is, kind of. That's pretty tight. Goodness gracious. So let's take this apart. You know, you know the old saying. I've been getting a lot of that lately where if something can go wrong, 
it's been going wrong so let's just see what's going on here yes look at that you know that build up right in there it's, i can't touch it because it's super hot but right in that tip there's a whole bunch of gunk it's flying out of there Now you can see that's clear. There we go. Let's put this back in there and we'll get some suction. And hopefully that's the only issue, but probably not. The other issue is probably down here. Let's see. This always happens, man. It's just the frustrating part of owning this tool. It's not let's hope that's enough because it's not not really working for me right now hope that we got it And of course, it's not going to work. Well, we got a suction issue here, guys. And before I can really remove anything else, I've got to get this suction issue cleared up. This is the fun part about doing things live. You get to experience what it's actually like. You know, we always make it look so glamorous in a production video, like a YouTube production video. But in the real world, these things happen. And um, a lot, like this tool, God bless it, but at the same time, God bless it, because I want to throw it like at the wall sometimes. You can't touch that, obviously, because it's like, whatever, 800 degrees. I still don't get it. It's not cleaning up. It's not cleaning up. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. It's not that end. It's the stupid attachment here. This is the worst part of this thing. These little attachments. There we go. See, there's a big glob of solder in the middle of it. This, this is the problem. Look at that mess down in there. Goodness gracious. And a big glob of solder was in there too, so. Let's put that back. Yeah, if you're looking for a fume extractor, hopefully Greg Collins from Laser Bear will have a really good one coming out soon. He's been working on, I believe he's been working on it. I saw him post some pictures of it. Um, and the reason I would like to have his is because his is quiet, whereas mine that is um, on the desktop most of the time is just super loud. Look at this stuff. Man, I'm still pulling junk out of that tip should just turn it it's not let's put some fresh solder on it and see how it acts probably shouldn't do this over that board it's not even doing that very well it's not sucking that at all very good uh, there it kind of went some Let's let's hope it goes and let's hope that's all we have to worry about. But that's you saw it, man. That is the harsh reality of working on circuit boards. You have to have some extreme patience. It's hard to plan 
Oh, this is gonna take exactly this amount of time. And it's not, because it's not always like that. And I'm still, yeah, you know, I'm not getting any suction out of this thing. I might have to take the whole darn thing apart. <laughs> Discipline, baby. This is just ridiculous. So, you love this tool, you hate this tool, it's your best friend when it works, it's your big old punk college roommate that used to never take a shower when it's, when it's not working, you know? Like, get your dirty butt in the shower, dude. Like, I've got a second one that's brand new that I've never opened just because I get so frustrated with this thing. I know one of these times I'm going to need to just take it apart and start over. Uh, or I mean, just like leave this in the pile and, and move to that one because I'm just like so frustrated. This is a brand new tip. I think I've done three jobs with it too. This, that filter's no good anymore. New filter. Hopefully, that'll help us out. And so done screwing with this thing. I'm not going to sit here and uh, I'm not going to let it ruin my day because it's just a stupid tool, right? I mean, it's not going to do anything besides just what it's doing. So, we're going to let it cool down. I'm going to clean this chamber. I'm going to do an impromptu. Gonna do an impromptu uh, cleaning of the back chamber because I, I'm getting a suction problem. Another thing, I don't understand how my filters are not fitting in here very good. Switch over to the bigger filters and they fit worse. So it's like never, never ending. Like which? Maybe I need a new rubber piece or a whole new chamber. But by the way, there we go. Chamber's dirty looking, but it's fine. Here we go with the tip. We'll let that cool down. And as it cools, we'll take a look at the back chamber. That could be a big mistake, like letting it cool like that. Because then it might clog it, but screw it. It's it's kind of getting on my nerves. And I'm gonna clean it before. Before I get too upset with it. Take the back pipe off there. My little screwdriver. I'm gonna get this diaphragm out. You guys get to see a bonus. How to clean the FR301 when it gives you a hiccup. Take this off. Take a look at this little thing here. This is our troublemaker, usually. It's sticky and garbage stuck in it. And my alcohol. Let's rub some of that here. Let's rub some of that alcohol right on it. It's booze on there. Clean it up, and then do the same thing, hopefully with the chamber over here. Beautiful. Now you mother... You, you better work, you, you hear?
I would go take you know. It's funny you say that. Oh. Okay. Funny you say that, Mad Day. Mad Day, we might have to take a swig of alcohol here. All right. Hang on a second. I'm gonna leave that problem. You know, when you're a CRT guy, you gotta have everything conceivably possible that you may need within an arm's reach. Especially when you're working live. So I'm taking this long monologue minute. Oh, taking this long monologue minute to let you know. Ooh. Okay, that sounds a little better, I think. Uh, to let you know that I'm about to get prepared. Oh yeah, that sounds that sounds cleaner. Hopefully, it's either cleaner or it's wrong. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let this heat up for a second. Oh, and we can leave one of these problems right now. And uh, as soon as I find my mouse, I'll show you what I mean. Let's go and let's do this. Cause I, I can't like, we can fix this problem. Woo, here. Tell you what, it's either gonna suck or I'm gonna suck. <laughs> what do you think? I do have some. Cheers. Woo! Oh man, nothing like some good straight. Room temperature crown royal to really hit the spot. Woo! Cheers, everybody. It's only 110 where I'm at, but doesn't mean we can't relieve some stress. Now that's. Ooh, I don't know what you'd call that. It's kind of disgusting <laughs> drinking on the job. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, everybody. Enough fun. Let's hope. Let's hope everything's heated up by now. Oh. I don't like it. So you could take this. Well, maybe I do like it. Sounds like it's sucking. Like I can hear. And hear it sucking. Let's see. Come on, baby. Suck, suck, suck some more. Whew. Nothing's easy. Just got a text from something ask if I needed financing. No, I don't need financing. Gosh, you know, the worst part about having a business phone number is you can't you can't put your name on the uh, do not call registry. So you're allowed to be solicited to as a business owner, but it's OK. Just ignore them. Oh, thank goodness. Thank the Lord. Ooh. It was the sweet, it was the wee bit of, I'm saying like it, it's Irish whiskey, but it wasn't, it was Canadian whiskey, right? Isn't that Canadian blended Crown Royal? Woo! Suction is back. Cleared it. Cleared it. Yes. All right, moving on now. All right, guys, so my furnace is kicking on right now. I'm going to turn the mic down while that's happening. And I'll let you listen to the music, and I'll get to back to working on this.
Time to reflow some sides, everybody. Speed for you. If you're coming in late, I did have a drink already, so bear with me. It's been a been an interesting decap, that's for sure. <laughs> so there's this, you know, we all have to be careful nowadays of what we publish, and I don't want to be. I, I pay a company to give me this great background music. There wasn't even a pad there either. I swear, somebody's been in here messing around with this. Okay, well, hey. It's a single-sided uh, thing. Like, some, it's crazy, because I'm not, when I, when I do this, I'm not actually touching the board touching the leg of the component heating it and then sucking the solder but sometimes it just doesn't matter even if you do it right look at that i mean because i didn't see a, a pad left behind or nothing it's just vaporized over in that same spot right over there hey james thanks for stopping by today um, there's also a lot of things on here that I'm going to have to reflow the solder on. I can just tell the solder looks like trash. So it's like, um, looks like we'll be working on this for a while if we got the time today. It'll be a long stream, maybe. If we go all the way, one time, one sitting. Let's go all the way. Such a stubborn, stubborn, stubborn mule. Stubborn as a mule, I tell you, this circuit board. It's like every cap, not a single one of them comes out without a freaking fight, man. It's like, you pulling me out? No, you're not pulling me out. I don't want to get out of that hole. Staying in that hole. That hole is my home. Come on now, you little bastard. You got to get out of that hole. I'm telling you. That hole is no longer your home. Your new home is the garbage bin. Goodness. 
goodness gracious. I mean, what an annoying little cuss of a board. Most of the time, I've, t I've told people that, like, and this has been a phenomenon, you know, everybody's wondering about PVMs. This particular PVM, I mean, this takes longer than, like, the 14-inch, even though it's easier to get to. So it's like, this costs, I don't, I don't know what just happened. What? what? Gosh, stupid board. One of the legs just came out. <laughs> Okay, another cap. Let's see. Okay, yeah, just more spam. I just don't understand how bad uh, this. This is some like these. Oh, guys, I'm not even joking. Like the the traces on this board are pathetic at best. And there's so much oxidation on here. God, this sucks. This is why I just don't. Man. And I mean, like this one up here. I didn't do anything in the damn half the trace ripped off. So I can't be too hard on the last person who worked in here. Change that one cap. This is just sh shite manufacturing from Sony. This is absolute trash. Trash. Cause like, where's the hell is this thing going? There's half a trace here. Half a trace there, right there. Sure does. Everybody needs my help. This is ridiculous. You, you. So, whatever. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna heat these legs up and just pull them through. Cause this, the solder tool is not working. And uh, it's just killing everything. It's like vaporizing everything. And it's on its lowest setting. So I can't just... See, and they just fall out of the other thing. 549. Whatever. I'm annoying. Literally. Literally. It's like you gotta have a... A uh, decoder ring to know exactly how to service each one of these... PVMs. I'm like, no, not worth it. Damn. It's terrible. I'm telling you. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go through and clear these two. Good grief. Wish I wouldn't have just stopped at the stopped at the darn. You know, the crazy dumb thing about this board is the top side is like twice as durable as the bottom. Just this, this thing is just gr disgusting. Disgusting. How does that not even come out like that? <laughs> oh, yes. Maybe if there's no problem with your deflection, you just you just do the color repair. 
You know? You know? You mentioned trash, man. Bored. This is, this is, this is poor manufacturing on Sony's part. But we only have six more caps to go. Let's get these. These We can get these two out. Surely we can get these two out without destroying something. It's flooding right there. like <laughs> somebody asked earlier if I hated my if I did if I ever got tired of doing this I mean I'm getting tired of doing this <laughs> I'm getting tired of this crap I mean every trace wanting to liquefy I think half that trace just vaporized. Literally. Yeah. Turned into damn mush mush. That's just insane. That is insane. Like almost that's the actually I remember that about this board. Okay. You're pretty much only gonna get one or you may get two recaps out of this thing, but that's probably not. Like once you recap it once, ooh, I don't think you're ever gonna be able to recap it twice. Because you couldn't, I don't think I could remove the caps again in this monitor. It would fall apart. I, mean, I don't even know. Ugh, the, even this cap. It's like, why? It's bad design. Or manufacturer, not design. It's the manufacturer's fault. Just... Manufactured poorly. Son of, a, son of a bitch, didn't they know they always going to be working on this 35 years later? They have that in mind? I don't know why I'm mad at them. Look at the people who make Tech Force now. They want us to throw it out after six months. <laughs> Definitely more durable up top. Way to go, manufacturing team. Yeah, the problem is, look how many damn little components are on this board, race. If we could get it reprinted, that'd be awesome. But look at all those stupid, goodness gracious, this thing has hundreds of components on it. I mean, golly. So many parts. I don't know, man. I'm about to say screw it and not pull these four caps, but... Let's go for it. It's just full on make this the most challenging could be Stupid mice, mice. <sighs> Ooh, my solder sucker is not sucking again because it's sucking. It's sucking. It's just not sucking solder. It's sucking, all right. Yes, yes, Harko. Gosh. Jerks. Woo! I'm getting heated. This may 
Man, I may retire from. I'm not. I'm, I wouldn't. I think the next time I'm gonna, if somebody asks me to service an eight inch, I'm gonna just refer them to this live stream, and I'm gonna say, one thousand dollars, one thousand dollars. You see how painful this is? Yeah. See my sucker just clogged. <laughs> Sucker, sucker. What do you think about that, sucker? There's nothing in you. Gosh, I need to watch that James Brown interview so I can feel good. You ever seen that interview with him on CNN's from the 90s or something? He's geeked out of his mind on crack cocaine. After getting arrested. This is a man's world. Feel good. <laughs> I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like, this is, oh, serenity now, serenity now, insanity later. Look at this, and I'm not gonna the C534. What is this one? Now, this is a bipolar cap. I'm not changing that one. I don't have that bipolar cap, so we're gonna skip that single cap. I don't even know if that should be forgot that there was even that bipolar cap and save on Pat sure didn't mark it on his cap kit cap kit list, so So woohoo, one more to pull. No, two more, I think, actually. I feel good. This is a man's world. <laughs> You should watch that interview if you want a good laugh. I think that's it. Unreal. Hmm. <laughs> yep, the last thing I uh, soldered for that was, uh, or reflowed the solder on was a, a chicklet cap, so it's not one that's going to get removed. Whew. Just water this time, everybody. Just H2O. I feel good. Na, 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 na. Some, of the, some of these holes just didn't get cleared. But, let's see. We're just going to go ahead and start jamming what we can. We jamming them caps right down in there. And then we're going to reflow solder as we do that. And, uh, I mean, if we're lucky, by God, if we're lucky and we're diligent and we get this done right, maybe we can get it done without having a problem. You know, we actually get these traces properly soldered. So, 50 volt, 100, 527, first cap. And I'm going to give them these. Oh. Sorry, thanks James. I didn't realize I did anything on that. <laughs> that was kind of stupid, I guess, huh? I didn't realize I was on the my You got me concerned, James.
Didn't realize I did that. Alright, I'm gonna put these little legs on here. It's probably gonna make this stream uh, turn private then after this, so... This might be one time... Fun watch. I don't know. <laughs> Well, we gotta make sure we got the bottom traces on these caps. And we do on this. We got we got bottom traces on this particular cap. Five two seven. Cool. Thanks for looking out, though. Five two seven, five two seven, five two seven. Yes, yes, we got one installed. One installed, and that one's gonna be good. I got a feeling. Now we're gonna go with a couple of these guys. Three of them. I might just, just smaller caps are not the problem usually. Let's see what we got here. Eight three one and eight three two. Eight three one is one of the ones that I was hoping I could just slam a cap through it. I can fit it. Yes. Okay. Eight three one. Eight three two. Same cap. I don't think any of these are the ones with the busted pads. No, these ones are good. So we don't have to worry about. Have to worry about the pads on this one. down trim all those legs what's it Okay, so the good thing is we'll just go through here and like take our time and individually check every trace while we're working on these things. <laughs> that way. Make sure nothing's wrong with it. Hopefully. Yes, yes, yes. Everything looks fine on those. Unless I do. No, that's all good. Okay. Oh, thanks, James. We are on five, six, seven. Five, 
I think this one should be okay. Let's make sure. Yeah, we still got. Thank goodness, we still got. Trace is back here. Check out. Um, let me show you something. I hope I can. Hope I can show you this. Um, it's not. It's not actually this capacitor I'm installing. It's actually near it. I'll show you something. And it's this. Like, can you see? Like this. This is just heavily, heavily oxidated. This IC or transistor right here, unreal. How much oxidations on that pad? That's why you got to reflow solder on this one. A lot of times. All right. Now we've done four caps. We've gotten through four. We are doing so wonderful. We're on pace to uh, really shatter with the world record for longest solder live stream. 553 is next, I believe. That's 16 volt 470. Got this pretty Nishikon cap to go in there. What's 537? A 50 volt 220. Just another big one. Now this is a cap that I was hoping to have a smaller one, but my smaller ones are all crap that's left over from these real bad cap kits I was sold. So like Chong's or Chang X or something like that. And I don't really want to use those. So we'll go with the overkill. Like 20,000 hour cap here. Who wants a cap? Who wants a cap kit? That's right, folks. We have an amazing cap kit for you today. The Sony 804 series. Or one to four five Q. Beautiful. Great. Uh, that'll do. What's number 529? I don't know why 529 is not earlier on this list. 50 volt 47, because it's up here. Oh. This is one that's... Let's see, what are we looking like at the bottom? All right, we get pads down here, thank goodness. Ooh, I thought this was one of the vaporized pads. There we go. This ain't gonna win any awards for the prettiest cap kit. I'll tell you that. I had to give it my best, but. I 
Let's move over here. Let's see what's 548. It's gotta be a, yep, 50 volt 10. I think this 532 is the big bad one. This is the big bad one. And this one's no better. This is one of the ones with a vaporized. Okay. This one has a vaporized pad, so we have to be able to access the top of the pad to be able to put solder on it. Thankfully, there's no trace going to the bottom side. So let's get that first leg tacked in. Second leg trimmed. And now, let's see. Yeah, and very much of a leg right here, right up in here. They can't. Oof. It would do the other side too, just because that's the side of the trace. There we go. Well, folks, 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 that's some some nasty cap work right there. Let's see what it looks like on the bottom. Mm-hmm. There's a big bulb of solder right there. Let's try to get some of that off. There we go. Alright, we'll take it. Hopefully... Hopefully that one will last. Next one's gonna be just as tricky. We got... 548 done. Now we're gonna be doing... A big one. 532. 25 volt 1000 I need to be able to get to the tops of these so I'm gonna trim the legs and give them a little bit of a um, anchoring point for me to hover safely above the board that's another good reason to have a leg trimmer like this all right Goodness, that is going to be a tight, tight one. Definitely tight. Hey, Sam. Samuel G. Good to see you. Yeah, let's fix this thing. Hopefully. Woo! Goodness gracious. We got it though. <laughs> I think we might have got it. Golly, that's what you gotta do, man. When they burn them traces off, look, see? That's the ones that were completely vaporized from the last person uh, messing with it. See how there's no traces coming off of those? So that's the good thing. See? Some of the traces don't lead anywhere on this side of the board. They're only on the top side. So as long as, as long as we're okay up top, which we are, we're good to go. All right. I'm feeling good now. I feel good. You know, I just knew I would. The other busted one are these. Oh. 545, what are you, 545? 25 volt 100.
25 volt 100. There you are. Level 5. Well, if you guys are enjoying the stream today, then uh, let's do the cliche thing and give me a favor and hit that like button for me. Maybe somebody will come in here and watch the last hour that we're going to be in here screwing around with this thing for the four. It's probably like a four hour stream today of uh, good old CRT repair. Wasn't expecting it to take this long, honestly. But it's probably been a good, oof, good minute since I've worked on a rambunctious little 804 series like this one. It's so wonderful. Something feels just so good sometimes when you're like, yeah, I know, I just mm, thought you were going to get me, didn't you? But I just got you back. It's like, no, no, no. That could have ruined my day. Now, this one does have tops and bottoms, and it's got a bottom trace, thing, I believe. Here we go. Let's do it. Yes. This one has traces. <laughs> like positivity, baby. Pass it on. I'll tell you what, man. This was it was all because of that one drink I took, I think. Really got me relaxed, you know. Maybe we just clip that. Wonderful. And yes, we only got three more nasty spots for see, PVM capacitors to go, which is 550, 547, and 549. 547, those are all 50 volt tens. 549, 550, yes. 547, yes. 50 volt tens. Get in the hole. Let's do it. Get in the hole. I'm in the zone right now. You know what? I'm in the recap zone. Let's do this. Look how much easier this is. This is the with new caps as it was to remove those nasty caps i got one cap down here that i have to solder from the top let's do it last so we'll take it out So I have one of my vehicles in the shop. Um, 
It's my SUV. And, uh, of course, they had something kind of major wrong with it. It was making a weird, crazy noise. And the guy swore he could fix it. Um, this is a professional, like, shop. I don't, I, you know, I don't really mess around. It's a European auto repair guy. Shop. Um, so I got the car back yesterday and the darn thing. Be damned if it really wasn't fixed. So I had to go drop it off with him. He said it was something minor, but I can tell that since he's had it all day, I thought they goofed up on something. And I think that's what happened. I think they goofed up on something. Because the car was not running right after I got it back. I had to take it right back there and drop it off for him. <laughs> And I paid all my money, so I was not too happy, but it's all right. They, they got it now, and they haven't called me all day. Up in the morning and tell me they were working on it again. All right, we got, we got those four caps in there. Mm -mm -mm. This is just some hideousness, though. As far as this board, all right, we got we got to go up top on this one. So we need to have a little bit of a leg on this cap. Not much, but enough to get under the. Enough to get under it. Craziness. All right, let's hope. Ugh, it's just hideous stuff right here. Hate it, man. Hate the way this looks. All right, we're going to get rid of that. Get some of that solder off that leg. There's like a minuscule amount of this. Let's hope that's enough. Such a small. That's better. All right, so guys, we're down to the last three capacitors in this kit. Five five one. Aging five five one. How did I end up with an extra capacitor? Oh yeah, I didn't change that one. That was bipolar. I got last three. I still got one extra. <laughs> See the legs I'm even working on, I'm not sure. And it's 
the final countdown. We got two more. Looks like just two more. Maybe one more that I'm missing, but we'll see. So these are 16 volt 470s. Let's see, hopefully I have traces. Not such great traces. Great. Let's not rely on the bottom. Is it me you're looking for? Come on, baby, give me that line of Richie. Hey, yay, that was actually like really good. That's a good thing about that. New tool. Yeah, see, that's a dual-sided trace right there. No, it's not. It's got a trace up top and a trace up bottom. Trace in the top and a trace in the bottom. Okay. Okay, we got it. We got it, guys. We got it, guys and gals. We got the last capacitor here. Right here. Be safe. Instead of... <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay. That should be all the capacitors. Let me hold it up to the light and make sure I didn't miss one. All right, great, 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 great. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna reflow solder before we stick this thing back in. Just because, like I said, these, uh... Holy moly, some nasty solder. I mean, nasty. Wow, we should really suck all this solder off this piece and reflow it completely. Yeah, it's whoa, it is bad. Okay, since we're not really pulling it, I'm not worried about getting all the solder out of it, right? Not 100%, but that is some disgusting, like, trash solder right there, that was. Goodness gracious. The same solder's right next to it, but that's on the heat sink. So that doesn't matter at all. Man, but it's like, oh. Hideous, this solder has. It 
It's made this thing not want to like bond to my new solder. This <laughs> whatever component this is. I'm 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 really playing with fire. I should just stop while I'm ahead and not try to do anything else because whatever I do, it's not like you know how when you try to mold solder to something that just doesn't want to mold to the new solder for some reason. That's what we got going on here. So cool. How could you just ignore that fresh solder? Don't you just want it? It's ridiculous. Unreal. I mean, it's not. It's literally. Why? Why do I do any? Why do I try this stuff? Why? Look at that. I mean, it's probably fine. It's just so stupid. All right, forget it. We're not we're not reclawing the solder on any other parts of this. I'm done with it. <laughs> I am done with this. With this, this is all you're getting. This is all you're getting, bored. You're driving me crazy, literally. This board has been unbelievably pushing me to the uh, brink of my patience. So we're going to move on from it. That's all you get. Or, and we're going to clean it. All right. Let's clean it. Big fat stupid jerk solder. Worst solder on a worst solder on a PVM award goes to the eight series. Absolutely the worst solder. Other bo uh, other PVMs have their problems. This one needs to be called out for having such trash solder. Everything else? Okay. Alright. We shall get the alcohol out. Where's my paper towels? Behind me. Okay. Hopefully we don't have to resort to burning it. Wouldn't be the first thing I've destroyed this week though. Yay, let's grab a dub dub and cause a cold solder joint. To happen on one of these bad solder spots in between where we just fixed. <laughs> just kidding. That's not going to happen. It better not happen. I tell you what. I don't deserve that much pain and suffering today. Certainly don't. No one deserves that. This is probably the strangest live stream you've ever been on, isn't it? At least it's unique, I think. What a long, strange trip it's been. Dipping on booze, vitamin C, and cocaine. Oh, trucking. Got my chips cashed in. I don't even know. I haven't heard the actual music, so it might not make any sense. The remix I'm singing here. Yeah, there we go. Clean that other side, even though we really didn't do anything over there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Now, you have to tell me, darling, are you going to work for us today? 
Are you going to work? I'll treat you right. Give me the comfort of working out. All right. Hmm. Goodness gracious. There's so much, so much alcohol on this board now. Good thing we've got a couple minutes. We can scrape off some nasty flux residue and inspect some stuff. Okay, good, good, good. See, it's, it's you inspect your joints. And... And that should do it. That should do it. Oh my goodness. You guys nervous? Everybody nervous like me? Hmm. A little nervous. Little nervous because we've got it pretty much finished. Oh goodness gracious! What a task. Okay. Then alcohol is not going to hurt anything up top. So. Let's see what happens. Not a cleaning seminar. It's mostly a servicing one. So we're ready to go ahead now and see what's going on. So let's switch over. Let's get back over here. Install it in our chassis, right?
Goodness. I got blisters on my fingers. Phew. Folks, I think we've got her back together. All right, let's not put too much pressure on it. Got everything else good. Make sure it's off. I don't, know if I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for this, but are you ever, are you ever truly ready? Are you ever truly ready to see something? Oh my goodness. Okay. Let's see what happens. Of course. Look at that. Damn it. Yeah. So we've got something. Something's not. Something in our vertical circuit isn't right. See that? God bless it. Something's missing. A trace is missing somewhere. Look at that. Well, folks. Let's let that show you. Let's try and see. And the good news is, yeah, the good news is, is I have like a, a back stock of like 50 of this stupid deflection board, but that's really a pain in the ass. Good grief. You saw me. So my whole procedure here doesn't really matter how good you work on it. This little bitch will oof, break your heart. That's what she's going to do. She's a heartbreaker. Let's see if we can take a quick look and see what we've messed up on. Of course, it also could have alcohol still in it. Somewhere that's disrupting it. So we'll check it out and... Uh, put it back together in a minute and see. Mm -mm. Yeah, nah, 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 nah. 
The problem is if I throw in the oven, the other parts, it's got two-sided parts, something, some, you know, what's that old Moore's Law? Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. This fucker will go wrong. I know it. I've had everything go wrong this week, so it's it's not surprising to me that this happened. So it's okay. I thought I would have a bit of good luck, but that's, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Okay, let's see here. I'm going to go back through here and just check, recheck all my work, especially down here in this vertical stuff. I mean, that's where it's probably coming because it's not. Hell, it could be that stupid uh, IC right there. Not getting uh, that I tried to reflow solder to. Let's uh, go to the overhead cam and uh, see. See what we can see. So I'll get my meter out because it's just a stupid trace missing. The trace missing what it is. Thank you, Trace. So let's just check out this IC since it's a piece of trash. That's good. Well, that's not. It's not so good. Yeah, I don't think that would be preventing flow of anything. Just looking for anything obvious to start off with. I mean, there's something right here that that makes me concerned. So let's let's see that that didn't look very good. This is one of the ones with a missing trace. <laughs> And that did have a little bit of maybe something left over from a trace touching something else. I don't know. Um, I'm going to check. There's a trace over here that's... That I should check out. That I should see if it's connected. Okay, good. Okay. That was a dodgy looking one. There's so much bad solder on this board too. Golly, this son of a gun. That's vertical size. It's that looks all dodgy. I mean, what did I tell you guys? I can't. I'm really trying to see. Let's see, like this. This down here looks terrible. Goodness gracious. No continuity. So much terrible stuff on here, guys.
we're gonna um Keep doing this. Come on, baby, please. Problem is this board, um, some of these boards, you know, the environments they come from, do such harsh things to it too over time. Of somewhere that's super humid, like Florida, is never a good place to store electronics long term, unless you're doing climate control. That's all the potentiometers. Here's one. Vertical center, so maybe that's the one. Uh, don't see too much more that looks bad. Maybe these up here. And of course, like this stuff, goodness gracious, all this. Hmm. What you gonna do? This looks terrible over here. That's just battery. We don't need that. That looks pretty good. Come on, baby. A couple more bad spots here. Take a look at the top side. Check out the tops. Everything. That's what I can see. Gosh, I really don't see anything that I've done in here. It looks bad, but. I see. Guys, holy shit. <laughs> I'm a dumbass. <laughs> oh, I'm a dumbass. I am a dumbass. You want to know why? See this big fat capacitor? 
I installed the fucker upside down. Sorry for my language, everybody. I know it's no, it's the middle of the day, but I installed that son of a gun upside down. That's the one with the messed up traces. That's that's the one. That's the one. Why didn't you guys say anything? Just kidding. Totally my mess up. Totally my mess up. I had literally... I had literally... Literally... Sat there for 20 minutes... Putting this thing in upside down. Upside down, baby. You can't... You can't... Rehearse that, can you? That's live TV, folks. Live entertainment. Or stupidity, if you want to call it that. Hilarious. Oh, it was that cap all along. It has to be. That's the vertical. That's in the vertical section. It's the one I was just, I was so concentrated on. It's the one that was replaced wrong the first time. Uh, hopefully this is it. I mean, technically there still could be something else, but that obviously would cause an issue. Well. Hello, Mr. Capacitor. Would you like to go in the correct orientation this time? Huh. Actually, maybe you wouldn't. You got too much. Oh, my goodness. I just... I hope this works, because this would be, like, the most epic stream. If it's just that... The fact that I installed the dumb thing upside down. And you know what? That's the kind of entertainment you get here, folks. We're not going to give up. We're going to cause our own problems and then hopefully fix them. Because that's what we do. Yeah, I want at least this side's still probably going to be my best bet to get in there. Goodness, that's a tight, tight little. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh my goodness how funny is that how funny is that all right let's make sure everything else is all right that's just wild day put a little solder on this other side and some of these other spot you You man. All right. Let's go for it. Let's do it again. Let's see. Man, let's hope. Let's switch over to are all of you? Sure. Why not? Oh, you're over here. It's like, what's going on with the camera? Let's sit right here and get this board back in there.
Oh, baby, here we go. Come on. Big bucks. Big bucks. No whammies. What's going on with this cable down here? But you, this thing is the most obnoxious of all the cables in this. One little cable. Oh, don't break my heart. There we go. Whew. Okay. Good. 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 Moment. in it let's see <laughs> quack 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 mr ducksworth There you go, folks. That's a that round of applause is for you and your patience. <laughs> Show me the money. We did it. Woo! Excellent. Excellent. Now it's good to let these capacitors get some time on them before we give up on it let's go and see what's going on on the other ah there we go there you have it how about that we got the color corrected, color card, par blah, 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 blah. color parts fixed up, cap kit installed. Had a little fun, little unintended drama for a CRT. So that's always fun. And thank all of you for hanging out here today and doing this with me. Because made it much more fun and interesting than having me do this alone and experience all these fun things you see that happen to me. That this is what that that happens on about half the jobs. You end up with some kind of amazing fun. What is it? Challenge. So there we have it. Wonderful. Well, folks, three and a half hours is all it took. Three and a half hours to work our way through this. I can't believe it. Has anybody been here the whole time? If you have, I love you. And uh, thank you. You're crazy. Just like me. So maybe what we'll do is, how about this? I mean, uh, like, we'll come back. You know, um, I, I've definitely got to take a break after this one. So I'm probably going to just end the stream for today here. 
but let's it's just cool with the entire basically like restoration process on this thing so uh what i'd like to do what i'd like to do is maybe come back on another stream and like do the whole adjustment thing like We'll run, we'll run, we'll run the calibration just for geometry. I mean, it looks like it's pretty crisp, but it might only take like 10 minutes. Then we can use it, test it out. Man, it was such a fun time. I can't believe it. I was really worried there for a second. Today has been a weird day. I mean, right? First off, we did the first repair and it started acting funky. And then the second repair, but that's funny. You know, it just proves it's always good to have somebody looking out for you and doing like uh doing like quality control like checking your work because they'd be like hey steve you did something wrong what i don't think i did anything wrong double check it oh i did something really wrong so i can tell you a little funny story i had somebody a couple of years back that uh had Asked for my help with a capacitor kit. I sent them a capacitor kit, or at least the kit list, like I do with, um, they were on Patreon. And they had, uh, I think it was an M series, like a 20 M2 MDU that they had uh, do the did the cap kit on, the flexion cap kit. And no joke, similar to what we saw here where the screen was like cut in half, I got an email from this gentleman like six months later after I had helped him, maybe even eight, eight, nine months after I helped him uh, show, showed him, you know, how to do the kit and everything and gave him the kit list. He was like, hey, Steve, I got the kit and now my my uh, screen is in half. And I said, oh, well, send me a picture of your work. And he did the same thing he had one capacitor in backwards but this darn capacitor lasted like eight months backwards eight or nine months it lasted backwards and then finally it was swollen and like about to explode but it had literally been reverse uh seated in the in the chassis and it, it somehow the crt functioned normally for a long time uh before it gave out and caused problems <laughs> absolutely don't install your caps upside down and expect for uh, a good result thanks Dell. i appreciate it thanks everybody else and uh thanks bob a lot felipe po17 brandon kelly and e555 or ness i'm out of an angle um it's it's been a fun day today. I'm, I'm glad a lot of people came in and had a good time. And it is literally three hours, 30 minutes on stream time from what my countdown says. So I'm going to finish it there, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you want to go back and watch anything on the stream, I'll check it out and make sure I didn't leave anything that I shouldn't leave on there. But uh, everything should be good, hopefully. Um, we'll have live stream playback available pretty much immediately. And oh, you guys have a wonderful rest of your days. And I will see you on the next uh, stream. It'll definitely be a stream before a new full-length video. 